Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. This week I got a little something different for the rack of the week. I'm playing on a, I believe it's a Murray pool table. It's a nine foot table at my local rec center. And it's got, uh, it's not five inch pockets. They're pretty generous, maybe four and three quarter, maybe four and a half. And they play pretty soft. And so you'd think, gee, that's an easy table. Should be able to run a lot of balls on that table. No, straight pool doesn't work that way. This table has a different set of issues. One is that they never vacuum the table. And so there's a lot of uh, chalk in the cloth. Even though it's Simona's cloth, it plays pretty slow and you got to stroke the ball. The balls are pretty clean, but they're pretty old. And they've got spots and scratches, and so they can tend to cling and not roll the way you expect them to on a if you had a really nice set of balls on a clean diamond. So it can be a bit of an adventure getting through a rack, but it's fun, and uh, you get to really stroke the ball sometimes. So let's take a look at uh, rack of the week number 16. I've got a shallow outside angle on this break shot. There's not going to be a lot of energy left on the cue ball, so I know I've got to just really wallop this one if I want to have any chance of getting some of those balls open. This is just a center ball hit. I'm just trying to stun the cue ball into the rack and hope that I don't scratch. Works out okay. The cue ball, as you saw, went straight forward to the bottom rail. Four balls came open and the rest just opened a little. Partly that's due to the shallow angle. Partly that's due to the fact that these are not the cleanest balls and it's possible that the rack didn't remain very tight after I racked it. I consider for a moment shooting a power draw on this two ball to try and open, open up the balls more. But uh, you can see where the two ball went in. Those are pretty soft pockets. But that ball would not have gone in if I had to blast it and draw the cue ball back into the rack. There's a couple balls open, so I just wanted to make that two ball and then assess my options from there. Right now I want to open the stack on the 13. I've got a window to draw the cue ball above the nine ball and try and open those balls, and the nine will be an insurance ball. And as you can see, that didn't work out. So now I need to take my time and make a good decision here. The first thing I noticed is that the seven ball came loose. And if I didn't have so much angle, I could hold the cue ball below the 10, and then I'd be able to open the stack with the seven ball. So I take a good look at that. Can I really uh, get a lot of right English on this and check the cue ball off the rail? And I think it's too risky. If I don't get a shot on the seven, I'm gonna have a long shot on the 15, and my chances are gonna be really slim. So that means I have to go to the 15 from the 9. And what I see looking at, at the rack now is that I have a natural angle to roll forward with a little bit of left English and come past straight into the 15 in the right side pocket. And that'll give me a great angle to draw the cue ball into the stack. For whatever reason, I don't see that. And I think I need to use my feet more and walk around and look at the shots. And that's something I've been working on incorporating into my game. Instead, what I try to do is come up on the right side of the 15 ball and shoot the 15 into the left side pocket, which is much more dependent on having the correct direction and speed. And of course, I come a little bit too far. I'm too close to the object ball. That means that I've got a really sharp cut. It's a backwards cut into the side pocket because the 15 is a little bit below. See, that's the line to the pocket. So I'm going to hit the rack if I can cut this in the side. I take a look at any other options. Is there a pack shot? Can I shoot the 15 in the corner? Is there anything else I can do? No, there isn't, so I commit to back cutting this ball. Take another look at it. Really make sure that I'm lining up my cue stick at the edge of that 15 ball before I get down and shoot the shot. With a shot like this, you've got to let go of the cue ball in your mind. There's only one thing that I'm looking at, and that's the edge of that ball into the side pocket. Stay still, keep my head still, and just follow through and hope for the best. I'm really happy with these results. It looked like a mo for a moment there I was going to get trapped behind the 14. I might have a shot on the 14 in the corner, but I don't think it's necessary. The uh, stripe on the right side of the table, let me get out of the way. What is it? It looks like the 12 ball. Get out of the way, Bob. Yeah, the 12 ball. So that's a bit of a back cut. And I consider going three rails, side rail, head rail, to side rail, back to center table. But the table's unknown. I don't know how hard I'm going to need to hit that ball. I don't know if I'm going to need to use a lot of English or none at all. And so I decide that I just want to pocket that 12 and go one rail to center table. If I come up table pretty far, I'm going to have a shot on that 11. 
If I don't roll up real far, I'll have a shot in the three or the seven, the eight. Pretty low risk position. So I just want to focus 100% on pocketing this ball and not a fancy positional route on top of pocketing the ball. I tell you, it feels great to get to this position considering the start of this rack. It only took six shots to, to open up this rack and get here. Now for the rest of the rack, I should shoot some normal straight pool controlled positional routes and shots. So this is a really great feeling. Obviously, I'm going to shoot that 11 ball. And I think I just need to come back to center table. I'm going to have a shot on the 837. And then I can make a decision and work the problem from there. I'm also considering if I can get on the window of the 14 between the 3 and the 10, that might be a good shot to begin the rest of the pattern. It looks like I either don't have that window or, or I decide against that, which is a shame because the 10 ball looks like it could be a great break ball and the 3 ball's right above it. That might be a great key ball. But since I don't shoot the 14, the 3 is the next shot. So I'm going to get rid of the 3 and the 7. They're both high balls above the rack area. Then it looks like I've got three potential break shots, the 8, the 6, and the 10. The 8's pretty high. That's probably not the best candidate. But the 6 or the 10 could work. And the 4 and the 1 are kind of clustered with them. So I've got to figure out a way to get into the center of that rack area and get those balls and get on a break shot. So here I can use the 3 ball to get an angle on the 7 so that my cue ball moves in that direction. And that worked out perfectly. Now I've got a real good controlled shot and I'm just going to let the cue ball run into the one and knock it down and I should have a shot on the 14 ball afterwards. This is ideal and what I notice uh, when watching the video is that you want to go right to this four ball because that's tied up with the six. As a straight pool player, you don't want to be too focused on the shot that you were going to shoot next. You want to keep your eyes open to all the possibilities. And luckily, I do eventually see the four ball on the side, but I take a good look at shooting the one and then the 14, or do I want to shoot the 14 and then the one? And after using the rack to check, uh, I see that either the six or the 10 is going to work real well. And I have the possibility of playing position such that Either the 6 or the 10 could be the key ball for the other ball as a break shot. So that's an option as well. There I go. I finally saw the 4 ball. That's absolutely the correct shot here. And now the remaining part of the pattern is real obvious. It's the 14 ball. Then you can use the 1 to bounce back out center table. Use the 8 ball to get on either the 6 or the 10 as a key ball for the other break shot. Seems pretty foolproof, but it does go wrong. Let's take a look at how. So this position looks ideal. I think the correct shot is to shoot the eight ball, draw the cue ball to the side rail, back out to center table. For whatever reason, I decide to shoot the 10 and follow the cue ball forward back to center table. And I think I'm going to get a perfect shot on the 8 to reposition for the 6 ball break shot. Really, there's nothing wrong with that shot if you execute it correctly. And if you walk around and check your angle before shooting the 10 ball, which I didn't do. So now I've got to make a recovery shot to get on my break shot. Not the ideal situation, but let's give it the best effort. First thing to notice is the cue ball is past the line that's parallel to the rail through the 8. What that means is I don't want to try to hold the cue ball one rail into center table. This is a Z shot. Side rail, side rail, and out. Don't think I could have hit that much better. However, I still have a somewhat difficult break shot. The ball is pretty close to the rack and I have a pretty sharp cut angle. One thing that makes this shot easier is I know my cue ball is going to hit that stripe ball, the second ball in the rack, full. So I just need to hit a straight high ball and put a nice firm stroke on it, and I should open up this rack. And I'm back in business. One parting note before I go, did you notice how far my cue ball followed forward after it reversed off from the rack? 
Now go watch Thorsten Holman play, and when he shoots a shot like that, watch how far his cue ball follows forward. And this is due to making sure that you're hitting at the very top of the cue ball with a very level cue, which I didn't do in this shot, but it's something I've been working on lately. So give that a try. Set up that break shot and give that a try. Really get your cue level and aim at the very top of the cue ball. You'll be surprised at how much power you can get and how much more rotation that cue ball gets when you can do that. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found that informative and helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Check out my book, A Short Stop on Straight Pool. You can find it at shortstoponpool.com. And stay tuned for next week's Rack of the Week. Thank you for watching, and be sure to stay tuned. I've got a video coming up soon. It'll be a compliment to my video, Top 10 Reasons Your Aiming System Sucks. It's going to be about how you should aim. So stay tuned for that one. I think you're going to like it.